And we're back with the third and final part. And this is going to be this right here. The Hectupler method. Okay, so this stuff is just beautiful and it's wonderful and it's just such a beautiful, wonderful way to grow. <laughs> like that uh, repetition to grow companies hopefully this all makes sense and this is what it's so exciting because in each of these examples and the way that this is going this really takes almost nothing but just being that you know that uh that uh, conductor that that lightning rod for brilliance and understanding it's all around you people are doing this every day all around you as far as getting things and making things happen in their companies and what you're doing really is taking brilliance and you're imprisoning it in your mind so that you understand it for the future it's just uh a great way to get going, and if it does not excite you, then you have no soul. <laughs> I was reading, I was trying to read the uh, the uh, uh, comment here or the uh, the boxes as we in, in between here. And one of the questions was, what if uh, somebody? And that was the the, the idea here is that what if uh, somebody's so unenthused about their business that they don't have any interest in growing it or um, moving forward and that's one of the reasons why you're going to have three by ones if you're dealing with somebody who doesn't want to grow their business you still i recommend still give them the opportunity but if that is not the direction they want to go if they don't really want to go, which that's almost never the case they don't want to do the work you know it's like everyone wants to be rich but not necessarily get rich you know the getting is the verb actually implies work then uh, get rid of them because you do not want that energy around you okay with our deck tupler method this could be uh, you know, a doubler or a tripler. And when we use that term doubler or tripler, what we're referring to is how much money this will make. What we're doing here is we're basically making a list of people whose compliance would mean that that business would double, triple, or hectuple. That means uh, by a factor of 10 or more. And we want, we want to make a list of these, these people whose compliance would mean basically, uh, when they're on board, when you guys are on board with them, uh, this will mean that the business will grow by, uh, you know, double, it'll triple, it'll be 10 times the size it is right now. You will make 10 times as much money. Who are these people? The biggest objection you will get to this, and this is again and again from all over the world, people will say that, uh, you know, that's, um, uh, our business is too big. We don't have one person that would double or triple. And I want to remind you of something. Uh, a couple summers ago, uh, a guy from Omaha uh, pledged $30 billion to his friend. And his friend was Bill Gates. And that guy, obviously, was Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett gave Bill Gates a pledge $30 billion to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which was already the biggest foundation at $20 billion. Twenty billion made it the biggest foundation ever. Thirty billion more than doubled it. So one person's compliance more than doubled his organization. I think it's fair to say that it's equally as potent for each of us, right? So keep that in mind whenever people feel like they're too big. Usually you're dealing with somebody that's uh, entered a dendritic loop and they're not really wanting to grow. So the first thing we want to do is these are usually are going to be gatekeepers. Okay, and that's one of the reasons that we went over this last, because they're normally going to be gatekeepers, and who are they going to be gatekeepers to? Think about that for a second. Who are these people going to be gatekeepers to? I'll give you a hint. It's in light blue up here. The big and bad clients, right? So it's kind of like those, uh, the um, when you go through the BB profiling, Basically, where you know, because now here in this example, this was a lot of getting in touch with one, you know, one at a time. Take that five percent and get in touch with these people one at a time. A gatekeeper can introduce you to hundreds or thousands of these people at once. All right, these are the people we want to make a list of. Now, our list. Sometimes people get a little overboard with our list. Our list to start out, I recommend generally that that list should be one to five. Okay, so maybe three to five, maybe as many as ten, but not much more than that the first time you start out. You can get crazy with it later, but we really want to make sure that we uh, are good at policizing how this activity should be. Okay, because that's the last step here, which is a big surprise, right? We want to policize our follow up. All right, so. Exactly how are we going to get in touch with these people? So we come back to our page here, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, our uh, policizing syntax here. So 
Uh, let's say we're looking for billionaires. Let's say your guy is Bill Gates. You know, what, what exactly what happens? Ten emails sent every two days or whatever. You know, this is exactly what I do. We want to um, take that noun, that verb, we want to politicize it, and want to look at exactly how we're going to get in touch with these people. Okay? And that is basically all there is to the Hectupler method. We target these gatekeepers, and we go after them hot and heavy. We want to politicize exactly what to do, and compliance from any one of these people. That's the criteria, because if you're, going, if you're working with 10 people, for example, or even just five people, and one of them uh, you um, agree to work with, what does that do to the business? What does that do? We know by definition that it should at least, doubling is the minimum. It has to be at least a doubler. That means it'll double your business or triple it or hectuple that business. Make sense? Very cool. Okay, so let's go over a few uh, examples. What color? It's always my uh, my biggest challenge of the day. What color should I use? How's orange look? Does that come up well? Yeah, not so well. Um, how about green? Okay. Z hectupler. Okay. You know, when I try to fix it, it usually gets crazier looking. Okay, the heck, Tumblr. Okay, and I just want you to think about any business you think you, that you're, that you're uh, considering working with. Think about this. What exactly, who are the people that, you know, just get, have, get an idea in your own head before uh, going into it. What exactly would you want to uh, accomplish or who would you want to get in touch with? Who would easily double, triple that, that business, okay? So we have a few examples. One of them is our comedy club, right? These are people having a blast. Let's say this is 100 people having a blast. Our comedy club, John and Mark Prop, um, they found that their best people were people, their best uh, comedians, their best acts also had large MySpace followings. Okay? So oh, and this, these are the best people. So, again, looking at their biggest and baddest clients, the people who had a good MySpace following, and uh, we can include Facebook, Fockbook, Okay, these people would also send out whenever somebody's going to go and perform at that comedy club. They would send out a blast and let people know, "Hey, I'm going to be here at so and so," and then people would show up so they'd get a higher take. And again, a comedy club necessarily isn't making money off of the food, but the drink. So um, there's the drinks, and uh, this is what they wanted. They want to get more people who had MySpace and Facebook accounts, more comedians. Now think about how they would do that with the BB profiling. You could get in touch with them one at a time. You could just get some, you know, get an idea, and that's usually a good way to test what kind of headlines, what kind of uh, compliance, what kind of dialogue is best for those. Uh, those what are they? What are they most? What's most important to those people? A few interviews will get you that. But now what they did is they went basically with the same exact, uh, the same exact approach, except when they talked to managers. Well, that's not what I want to do. All right. There we go. Okay. When they talked to managers, they made it clear to the managers, and they focused on managers who promoted uh, MySpace and Facebook. And specifically at this time, it was MySpace. All right? So basically, they want to get acts that are very heavily involved with MySpace. Just doing that alone, by making sure that each of their acts, each of the people they work with, and they told the managers, the booking agents, that we want people with MySpace, just by making that simple change, they had four times as many people, and they did this within one week. Within seven days, they had four times the attendance. All right, four times uh, the audience, I should say. Four times the audience. Okay, because it's not necessarily, you know, their goal is to get, you know, their, um, a lot of these people were coming in, and what was happening is that they got completely booked. They got booked solid. There was ab absolutely no room, no more room left in their comedy club. So what they ended up doing is they, for the first time in the 13 years that they had been in business, they had a wait list. 
And if you go to comedy clubs, unless it's a huge act, they're not usually going to have wait lists or unless these people have a big following on MySpace and Facebook. And this also helped promote the company, too, because they took that wait list. They said, okay, well, you know, it might be booked tonight, but uh, tomorrow, next week or so, um, you know, we'll have this guy on with this guy. And, you know, so they would take, let's say they have five people with huge MySpace followings. Those people show up. There's no room. They add them to the wait list and say, well, we'll have these people here in two weeks or three weeks. We'll let you know when they're here. And they end up building their list as well. This alone had more in that first seven days, they had more than doubled their income. Their net income more than doubled in less than one week, just by changing who they're going to get in touch with and just by focusing on the people that will actually make them uh, the doublers in this case. I'm trying to get this highlighted correctly. There we go. Just by focusing on the doublers in this case, that's all it took, and they had doubled their income in less than seven days. And this, I could keep going with that because what they ended up doing over 90 days was pretty amazing. They ended up taking that same model, moving to other clubs, and actually they had built Terminators over $100,000 a month just with that model of working with people with MySpace and Facebook followings. They developed a whole formula around that. This is John and Mark Prop. You've heard part of their audio. And this was what started that, looking at who do we get in touch with? Who are the best people to get in touch with? And that was how that entire process started. Lerner Ramos, he had the actual theater. You guys remember they had their theaters. This is our silver screen. Here's the audience. Found out that the biggest people, the biggest uh, spenders, the biggest, most profitable items were when churches had private showings. Now, instead of going after churches one at a two at a time, they targeted churches with five to 10,000 members in their congregation. Any one of those people would double or triple that business, right? Because this is our gauge. So we're going to target. Imagine if you were, knew that your theater made money, the most money from churches. What would you do? You'd put together a criteria, five to 10,000 members at least. Then we come back to our policizing. I'm going to bring this up again and again because I want this burned in your mind. We come back to our policizing syntax. We want to get in touch with churches with ten to 15,000 people. That's our noun. Get in touch with contact whatever. That's our verb. We want to have 15 interviews with uh, churches of five to 10,000 people every week or 20 interviews every week makes sense as soon as they policize that miracles happened back here okay so five to ten thousand people their net income went from just a few hundred dollars okay from a few hundred dollars to over sixteen thousand dollars now what does that do if you own a theater and all of a sudden you start netting an extra $16,000 a month without playing any of the Hollywood or any of the blockbuster movies? Just by playing these small movies that nobody's ever heard about with churches. 16 grand a month, an extra 16 grand a month just by looking at uh just by contacting people in that in that uh that group. Makes sense? Okay. Um uh, one of the other this is um, an example that's more uh closer to uh, home with some of you education software if you guys remember i had uh, brought them on dean beckett actually took the same educational software and they found that the the best clients that they had the best uh, colleges um um the best uh, people that were this was software that was helping people with the uh, test scores they found the best people that they were working with were all alumni they were companies that were run with alumni from the actual uh Okay, we've got that. <laughs> okay, they were alumni run, basically. I was going to add a few things, but I'll keep it there. Okay, they were alumni run. So what would you do with that information? If you knew that your biggest and baddest clients were from uh, organizations that were alumni run, what would you do? What would you do, right? Here's what they did. Made a quick list. All right, in this case, they made, I think it was actually six people, of the best, absolute best uh uh, colleges and places they want to get into, right? And then they got in touch with the director of alumni activities. And then there's different names. Every college will have a different name for them, like, you know, Badgers or Warriors or Warhawks or whatever. But um, the idea is really simple, and this is a very powerful concept because this director is very easy to get in touch with. And just by getting in touch with one, they can introduce you to hundreds or thousands of the people that are ideal for you. In this case, I don't even know where. Okay, right there. In this case, they were wanting to move their software to these alumni-run organizations. These were hands down. What they found again and again was that their best people, the top 1% of the clients, was all alumni-run. So how do you get in touch with the best alumni? Well, you go right to the director. 
Now this is very interesting because if you remember from that audio, what they did is they had never seen more. They they, they worked with the, like most software with licensing. They had had ne their best month ever was 250 licenses, right? When they had done this in the first 60 days, they had over, if you remember this, 6,000 licenses. For the first time, they had to get a staff, a full staff. They had 10 to 15 people working these accounts constantly just by focusing on getting in touch with the director of alumni activity. All right? Does that all make sense? Okay, so this should make sense. All we're doing is we're making our quick list here, right, of who the big and bad people are that we want to contact. Who are our people? Then we policize the activity, and it's that simple. How do we get in touch with them? Compliance from one of them, it's like a domino effect, right? We trigger one and the rest of them fall. It's like the domino effect. So we want to make a list here of what any business that you've worked with or any business maybe you've had a job at or anywhere. Who is that one person? Who is that one person? What do they have in common? Make a list of, of two or three people just like them. Then we add our policies to it, right? Very important. And then it's lights out. Okay. So... Assignment time. This is assignment three. Okay, what are we going to do? Uh, three by one, very good. One more time, just for the people in the back. Three by one, what does that mean? How many conversations is that going to be? That's going to be three conversations, right? Three conversations. And what does one of them turn into? We'll find out in a second. What you're going to do is you're going to isolate and help them determine who their deck tuplers are. Okay? And then the policies to get in touch with them. So all we're going to do is take this same uh, stuff over here. Right, our three items here, usually gatekeepers from the big and best clients, the biggest and best clients, who are the people, one to five to ten, and then policize, how would you follow up with them? And just one last time to make sure, because I know you've got this and you've got a mental picture of this, this is our policizing syntax, right? I didn't have our noun labeled. No, what? <laughs> no one. All right, that's our noun and that's our verb. Um, is on this side over here that could be in either either order we have our prefix and our suffix our policizing so that's exactly what you're going to do with your company that's how we put together a deck uh, a hectupler um, we uh, I put uh, <laughs> there was actually we, we had a debate on uh, whether or not introducing the deck tupler that's why I had a deck tupler here but you're right I will move that and fix that hectupler I'm thinking ahead of myself. Okay, so we isolate our hectopper policies. These are the three things you're going to help that company uh, do. The one that you do pick, but you're going to do this all for all of them and just get an idea of how the, the more you do this, the more the quicker we get, the more neuroplasticity we have, the more dendrites we have, the more connections you make, the easier it'll be, right? So, okay, coming back here, that's your assignment. So we want to get that in place. We're going to do it partially. For all three companies, they're all going to see what they could be doing. And then one, what does one become? Dot, dot, dot. That's our GXM candidate. Okay? And then we want to know how it goes. Whoa. Okay. As always, we want to know how it goes. So those are our assignments for our last three, for our, um, for our three ways of growing companies quickly. One, two, and three. We want to do one at a time. This is a three-part series, so you saw one at a time, and uh, we want to always hear how it goes. Okay, that covers our three lightning-fast ways to grow a company and double, triple, or hectuple it in less than seven days, less than seven hours with you guys. You guys are going to do awesome. Okay, let us know how it goes. We'll talk soon. Thanks. God bless.